What did we learn today about Russian collusion to influence the 2016 election? Time now for tonight's power panel. Former White House advisor to President Clinton, Nelson Cunningham. Constitutional attorney, Elizabeth Price Foley. And former Republican National Committee lawyer, Alex Vogel. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for having us. Pleasure Thank you. To be here. All right, Elizabeth, I want to start with you. Uh, a lot of folks would say we didn't learn a whole lot. Maybe the juiciest stuff is redacted or under seal. What did you gather from these filings today? Well, you know, I think finally what we're learning is that Robert Mueller is starting to put his cards on the table and he's sort of coming up with no aces, uh, at least with regard to Trump-Russia collusion, which was his original mandate. Uh, and so uh, there's really no there there on either the Manafort or the, the um, uh, Cohen filings that suggest anything about their awareness of or participation in. Uh, Trump-Russia collusion. So I think what we're going to see now is sort of a great pivot uh, away from Trump-Russia collusion and toward things like obstruction of justice mm -hmm. or possibly campaign finance violations uh, because uh, this has all been about, I think, from day one, an effort to to impeach the president, and of course, uh, you know, that doesn't require Trump-Russia collusion. It just requires uh, some political basis, therefore. Okay, so we do know, although we have many questions on this collusion question, which is the original task of the special counsel, they do talk about in the Cohen filings about the fact that individual one, who we all believe to be the president, um, they say that he was actually directing Cohen with respect to paying off a couple of women who had said that they had potential affairs with the president, one night stand, however you want to characterize that. Um, law professor and attorney Jonathan Turley had this to say about those particular parts of the Cohen filing. They are directly implicating the President of the United States. Now, federal election campaign violations are rarely criminal matters, but they can be a crime. The issue is not how serious is this crime to prosecute. The issue is the special counsel has come as close as you could get to accusing the President of a conspiracy to commit a crime. Nelson, we know that often these uh, election violations go nowhere or they're a slap on the wrist or a fine or you make it right. Uh, what do you think happens in this case? Well, before coming to the to a White House, I spent six years in New York as a federal prosecutor, and I've written a lot of sentencing memos. I've read a lot of sentencing memos. These sentencing memos today were pretty deadly stuff. Uh, terrible days for Manafort, terrible day for Cohen, and I must say, not a not a terribly good day for the president. Uh, the the president was clearly named as having been intimately involved with Cohen in August, September, October of 2016 on the two payoffs. And these aren't just campaign finance violations. Uh, a prosecutor would look at those and say, well, that looks like money laundering. Well, that looks like, that looks like fraud. Uh, these were, according to the prosecutors, and these are not Mueller's prosecutors, these are the Southern District of New York. Uh, the career prosecutors saying this is uh, uh, this was active cooperation between Michael Cohen and individual one, the president, mm -hmm. to uh, to pay off these women and to keep them from coming forth with their stories in order to interfere with our with the election. That's that's stiff stuff. Okay, but with all these filings on the table now, Alex, this is the way the president uh, called it tonight. He said, uh, "Totally clears the president. Thank you." That was his tweet. And then from uh, our John Roberts talking with Rudy Giuliani, of course, part of the president's legal team, said this. They call it a complete exoneration of the president. They have nothing, and we are very happy about it. But, Alex, we wouldn't expect his legal team to say anything different. Right. I, I wouldn't expect that. They wouldn't be doing their job if they said anything different. Uh, look, I, there's, there's three pieces here. Uh, one uh, is uh, what Nelson referred to, the Southern District uh, filing in the Cohen case, which has nothing to do with Russia or collusion or any of those things. He's right. It is very significant. Uh, it does name the president. Um, someone earlier used the unindicted co-conspirator term. I would actually use the unindicted, unindictable co-conspirator because per DOJ policy uh, everyone agrees you couldn't indict a sitting president mm -hmm. much less for this and then you have the the two uh, Mueller filings in Man 
Manafort and Cohen's uh, cases. And uh, frankly, I would argue while, you know, the president was not exonerated, um, nothing that came out today really raises any additional issues in terms of legal liability on those cases for the president. Mm -hmm. What I do find remarkable was in the Manafort proceeding, the fact that he lied about being in contact with mm -hmm. senior administration officials in 2018. Yeah, let me, it, let me, because you mentioned that, I want to, um, we have part of that from um, what happened today. They said that basically uh, this, and Axios, you know, talking about the fact that Manafort's now accused of lying uh, about having multiple contacts, and Catherine talked right. about this too, with people in the administration who probably shouldn't be talking to him in the midst of this, and he's not supposed to. They say the document could serve as a warning shot to other witnesses not to lie or tell partial truths, which includes the president, who's already submitted his written statement to Mueller's team. Hey, well, look, there's no doubt you shouldn't lie. Um, you will get in trouble. Uh, 18 USC is pretty clear on that point. Uh, but on that issue of why was any administration official talking to Mr. Manafort when he was either uh, indicted for a mm -hmm. felony or had already pled guilty to a felony. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty remarkable. Uh, and frankly, if I was the president and I was especially unhappy about any part of this today, I'd be focused on, on uh, my ire in that regard. Yeah. Okay. So also, and, and these two different memos, the one from the federal prosecutors uh, with respect to the Cohen case and the one from the Mueller team, very different. I mean, the, the prosecutor is saying basically this guy really didn't help us very much. He withheld information. We don't really think you should make a sentence, you know, any lesser than you have to, maybe a slight downgrade. Special counsel, though, much easier on him saying he's been helpful. We've, we've gotten all kinds of information, but also saying this, the defendant has provided and has committed to continue to provide relevant and truthful information to the SCO, the special counsel's office, in an effort to assist with the investigation. Quickly from all of you, and I'll start with you, Elizabeth, uh, what kind of cooperation do you think they have with Cohen going forward? Uh, I don't think much. I mean, you can tell from this filing, uh, they don't uh, uh, file a 5K uh, letter or memo on behalf of Cohen. They're not seeking a reduction in his sentence uh, because he didn't provide uh, much cooperation, much juicy information that they could use in building their narrative of collusion. Uh, so basically, they recommended that his uh, sentence for lying to Congress, which is what the special counsel's jurisdiction was, uh, run concurrently with his sentence uh, imposed by the Southern District. District of New York. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, what we have here, though, I, I want to go back to the big picture for a minute because we have sort of an unprecedented uh, appointment of a special counsel uh, by Deputy Associate uh, uh, Attorney General Rod Rosenstein based on no criminal predicate. Uh, there was no evidence of crime. This is very much unlike uh, uh, Watergate. It's unlike Whitewater. It's unlike Iran-Contra. It's not like Valerie mm -hmm. Plame. All of those involved uh, evidence of a crime prior to the appointment of a special independent counsel. We didn't have that. We should have never had a special counsel appointed. And the special counsel has vast investigatory power. And they've used this power to, sh to shake down every associate of the president so they can take down the president.